Thank you, Trey, for being on the show, man. Of course, brother. It is so good to have you here and uh, to capture your story. That is awesome. So uh, tell me, where are you from? I am from originally Fort Walton Beach, Florida. However, I've lived all over, like tri-coastal, even California, East Coast, Georgia. But yeah, Fort Walton Beach, Florida, Panhandle. Yeah, how did yeah. you get all those places? Um, you know, uh, when I moved to Savannah, Georgia, uh, right after college, it was because my wife was moving there, who I hadn't actually married yet at that point. Mm. But she was a high school band director there in Midtown Savannah for a while. So we moved up there. Um, as far as California, uh, yeah, I moved out there in a dark part of my life to, to make money. Yeah. And, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to get into that oh, in just a minute. It, yeah. <laughs> so what year are you at Garrison? Uh, I'm a third year student in the worship arts department. Hmm. Yeah. Tell me what your biggest takeaway from the third year worship arts has been for you. Um, third year worship arts has given me a perspective of being able to let Jesus take the stage. You know, it's not, it's not about you and it's really not about you doing a job. It's about being a, a vessel for Jesus Christ to flow through and to bring people into a closer awareness of how God loves them and how he's always present. That's deep. Yeah. Tell me, how did you hear about Karis Bible College? Well, <clears throat> interestingly enough, how I heard about Karis Bible College, uh, was uh, through a lady that I was seeing for acupuncture. Um, I was working myself to death pretty much, so at that point, making a lot of money, I was able to afford things to kind of keep my body fo going forward. Uh, well, uh, she was kind of acting as, a, as kind of a Christian counselor to me, which I didn't know, because one day she just popped up and she's like, do you have any uh, spiritual beliefs? And I'm like, okay, this lady's gotta be like a Buddhist or Hindu or something, because she's <laughs> sticking needles in me, right? But I told her, I'm like, Jesus Christ is my savior. And you know, she just kind of chuckled. And uh, it was an interesting, uh, from there on out, she kind of acted as a counselor to me and actually sent me to the church that I ended up at um, uh, a couple of years before God told me to come to Karis. But anyway, she, um, she was acting as a counselor, like I said, and I started getting words from God. And so I, I started sharing with her because I really didn't have a bunch of people to share with. And a lot of people, you start telling them that God's talking to you, they think you're crazy. But uh, this lady was, was super interested in what was going on with me spiritually and how I was growing. And I said, you know, God told me that when you pray, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to thank him for the things that are already done, like they're already done, and you pray in that way. And she goes, you know, that, that sounds kind of like um, this Bible college, what they're teaching down in Colorado Springs. Because I guess at that point, she wasn't aware that, that the move had been made to Woodland Park. And um, so she goes, uh, it's, it's called Karis Bible College. And so I went home and being a worshiper, the first thing that I went to check out was the, was the worship and they have lots of archived worship. And so um, I, I, was, I was enjoying it. Still hadn't heard Andrew Womack teach at all, but um, I just kept, kept tuning back into the, to the worship. And then one day uh, God finally spoke to me and said, sell the house, move to Woodland Park, you know, you're going to care. So I guess uh, it was just through uh, acquaintance. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think your biggest revelation is in the whole time you've been at Karis? Uh, for me, personally, I, I believe that it's really an identity thing. And I think that that's been my main thing, even when I'm going to minister to people, is the fact that God, once you, once you find out who God is and find out about Him, what His true nature is, you find out how He sees you. And that really helps you out with, with knowing how to move forward in your purpose and your calling is just knowing who you are. So like, it's got to be an identity thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowing who you are. Yeah. That's a that's like a foundation. Absolutely. To yeah. Live your life if there's with. anything that I could that yeah. I could convey to anybody, identity, just knowing God first, yeah. His identity, mm -hmm. which gives you yours. Mm. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> so tell me, uh, have you lived a Christian life style the, your whole life? Oh no, absolutely not. Uh, I mean, to to back to back way up. <laughs> Uh, at the age of 11, uh, I accidentally ended up at a Baptist church camp. And I say accidentally because there are no accidents, but my parents who sent me off there for the week or whatever it was, were not aware that it was, it was affiliated religiously at all. And so I got saved at this church camp and I came back and you know, I'm talking about Jesus and praying and whatever. But at that point, uh, see I'm from the Southeast, you know, like I said, and the Bible Belt. And my parents both being good school teachers, it's, it's you know, superficially everyone has to have this image. So we, we attended a Methodist church at that point and spiritually dead to say the least. But not only that, but there was no discipleship whatsoever. And so uh, I walked off 
away from the church in general and, and from Jesus uh, trying to find out who I was because I didn't realize that my identity was actually in Christ. So it was about a 24 year period there before God really got a hold of me again and kind of brought me back into the fold and met me where I was. In that interim period, I, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, mm. Um, I went in. I went to college and studied music, uh, education. I studied um, composition of music and performance on the trumpet, because uh, I was actually a professional horn player I, for about a decade. And during that period of, of ten years, uh, a lot of debauchery, to say the least. Now, nothing like infidelity, because I've been married for about 17 years. But it was more like self-worship, you know, trying to find out who I was and trying to fill that hole with anything that I could stuff into myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, no, it was definitely not a Christian lifestyle by any means. Um, it, was, it was very selfish, actually. Um, yeah. But you're here now, and you, you said you played uh, some instruments. Indeed. You play a bunch of instruments? Uh, I play most of the brass instruments. Um, trumpet was my main axe. Uh, I, I went to school and, and shed that for, for years and then played it professionally for a while. Now, piano is what I'm playing from these days, what I minister from. Um, and it was actually my first instrument at about the age of seven. Uh, classically trained a little bit, but before I picked up the trumpet at age 12 and, and kind of went from there. But uh, when, I, when my life kind of fell apart before we moved out to Colorado, which was about eight years ago, um, I put the music down completely and kind of wrote it off, man, because, you know, it wasn't going to be lucrative or it wasn't going to be anything, and I just kind of pushed it away and went after money. Uh, it took a little while, almost a year, maybe even two, uh, before God was like, you know, you can do that. Because I, had, I found uh, contemporary Christian music in the interim period there uh, when God was reaching out to me. So, yeah, music, it's, it's, it's purposed. There's no doubt about that in my life. You have something exciting coming out right now, right? I do. And tell us a little bit about what your project is that's being released. Awesome. So uh, I have a CD now. Uh, it, it, it's called Here I Come. It's all original music. There are six tracks on it, so I guess you could kind of call it an EP. Uh, but every bit of that was financed through donations. Mm. Uh, so God took care of that. And it was something that I felt on my heart that he had been telling me for quite some time. Uh, almost two years, I had been kind of getting this, you need, to, you need to record music, you need to record music. And I just was kind of like, you know, God, you know, it costs money to, rec I mean, to professionally record mm -hmm. music. You can go and turn a phone on and record anything. but. But this is this is professional, uh, professional, and um, and I believe it's the favor of God and, and His will. And what I've learned through that process is that if you just step out in faith and walk toward what it is you think God's saying, it's His will, it's His bill. He takes care of it, brother. Yes. Yeah. So if somebody's tuning in, they're hearing your story, and they want to get uh, their hands on a copy of your CD, how can somebody get a copy of your CD? That's pretty easy. It's it's my name, Trey Hebson. Dot com, T R E Y H E B S O N dot com. So it's awesome. Yep. For me, brother, I have to say that it's been a 180 degree shift in my life from heading in a selfish direction and trying to fulfill selfish desires to heading in the completely opposite direction and trying to be selfless and fulfill the purpose that God has made me for. Mm -hmm. And this, this stop here at Karis Bible College has been preparation, it's been, um, it's been spiritual maturity, you know, just growth. In, in that identity process, uh, in that identity thing where I know who I am. Not only do I know what I'm made for, but I know that, that the way that God sees me makes me beyond reproach. No matter how many times I trip, the Lord does not see me as my mistakes or my past. He sees me as my future and he knows where I'm going. What does embracing your destiny mean to you in light of Karis Bible College? Embracing my destiny in regard to Karis Bible College definitely means uh, becoming prepared for what the future is. Uh, finding a foundation and just building things on that with God. Yeah. And somebody's tuned in right now. They're watching this. And uh, what would you tell them about why they should come to Karis and why they should apply today to Karis Bible College? Well, first of all, if you feel like uh, you want to come to Karis Bible College, uh, like Andrew says, it's probably not the devil and it's probably not your flesh because your flesh doesn't want to submit to that. So I say go for it because for me personally, it's been 
one of the largest parts of my growth process, just getting, like I said, a solid foundation in the Word and a solid foundation in who I am in Jesus. And as far as doing it today, uh, why wait? Yeah. I mean, your future, your future is, is, is here, and you're right here. The way to get here is through, through that process, and, and Karis is a large port of, portion of that process. <laughs> It is. You know, I, I got to say this, like one of my favorite memories of you, um, uh, you're a talented musician and, and have an awesome voice, uh, but we got to share, uh, we were the three kings oh, yeah. in, uh, in the heart of Christmas. But one of my favorite memories is uh, you played Jesus as well. Indeed. And, I, you know, it just stood out in my mind because you're, I mean, you're a tough dude. And, uh, but tell us a little bit about what happened to you when you were playing Jesus. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah, wow, Clay. So there was, uh, at one point, um, I was getting ready before the scene where Jesus goes across and gets kicked and beaten and jeered at, and I'm standing in the corner with the cross, and I'm just listening to God, and I'm, 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 I'm asking him, why, God? Why, why am I here? Why is this? Why is that? Because I'm a very analytical person. I like to know why. It, it helps me. Uh, to, to have to be able to wrap my hands around the why and and after standing there for five or ten minutes and and whying at God for a while uh, he said he, he, he kind of shook me and he said son for you there is no why there is only my love mm. and you don't you, you don't need to focus on why you just need to trust me mm. so that that happened <laughs> and then also just the just uh, they weren't kidding when they were kicking and kneeing and beating on me when I was going across the stage. And just, and that little bit, you know, is, is a little bit painful. But just to, to think about what our Savior went through for us, that He would do it again and again and again for each one of us individually. Mm. It's just amazing, man. Mm. So that. Yeah. <laughs> Trey, thank you so much for being on the show today. Absolutely, brother. Thanks for watching this episode of Cares Talks. To learn more about Karis Bible College, visit our website today. Hey friends, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of today's Karis Talks. Is God speaking to you? Are you wanting more information about Karis Bible College? Click this link below, get a little more information. Also, if you've enjoyed this testimony, like, share, and subscribe to this channel to hear more awesome stories of what God's doing here in Karis Bible College.